in this case, we really want to send nothing. Um, we're going to send the room as needed. Yes. Yeah. No, we should be. Um, we should be. Well, that would be. Yeah. What does that mean for the recording? What? I mean, that wasn't recorded as well. Not the audio. But they have the text. Okay, but um, so it's basically is Barun not hearing anything at all? So now he now he is. Barun, can you say something to indicate that you're hearing us? Yeah, I hear you now. I think once Armando uh, okay. unmuted, I could start hearing, which was like a moment ago. Okay, so uh, just to bring you up to date, uh, Barun, for what you missed, basically, um, you, you know, for video we send black. Uh, or, well, to to send. The black we send one black frame per second the question was hey audio what's the should we do something similar Niels made an argument against that basically saying audio is fundamentally different than video because of the state issue uh, his recommendation is to send nothing regardless of whether you have CN or DPX negotiated since they may or may not be you should just send nothing uh, and so that's kind of what we're discussing now is does Niels you know Niels proposed solution make sense or, or no, people have other opinions. So uh, the whole codex tolerates uh, not sending packets and then starting to send packets. Yeah, so on, on that subject, you know, there are there were lots of implementations that used to, you know, the, the whole issue of how, uh, of sending nothing, right, in RTP or TCP, uh, it was a much bigger issue when you weren't bundling and doing MUX, because then you could just go, hey, what happened here? But, you know, especially in WebRTC where we you have the ICE consent stuff, it's not like the NAT findings won't go dead. No, I, was, I was more worried about the codex. <laughs> the OPUS opus has this thing that, uh, you actually have this pre roll thing that, that you have to process a couple of packets before you actually can get the right sound. Right. The pre roll Well, so, you know, here it's that you, uh, so you're concerned if we had it enabled, uh, dis if the track was disabled and we enabled it, are you saying that some s uh, important initial things wouldn't maybe get sent? Is that your... I don't know that they would get sent either, even if you were sending like some... So what I'm afraid of is that, is that when you start sending again, instead of going silence, 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 Hey, yeah, just be talking. We get silence, silence, silence. Man, then, then we get it. So uh, that we get serious at the starting at the starting edge. But uh, if, if but, I mean, if someone can tell me that uh, if people stop sending packets and start sending packets again, it's and it's no problem, then uh, it's fine. If uh, we don't have that evidence, we should look for that evidence. Yeah. So uh, I look at Harold. Uh, so this is Varun. I'm uh, looking at Harold's earlier proposal. Like, why not? Why don't we do the same thing as we do for mute? Mm. What do we do for mute? In the case of mute, what do we do? We uh, we don't send anything, right? And then when you unmute, do you or do we start sending comfort noise during mute? I don't think that happens. In the case of mute, nothing goes. So, so with the current text says this must send silence, and I think one of the issues that Niels had with that was, you know, depending on whether you have CN or DTX negotiated, right, that might mean comfort noise, or if you didn't put comfort noise in, it might mean nothing. Or, you know, or if you had DTX, like with Opus or something, it would, it would mean Opus DTX got. So it's, it's not like, it, even the guidance there isn't, it's right there now, it's not quite really uniform. Um, right. It's going to generate different things depending on what, what got negotiated. Uh, I think so my question see. is uh, still the same, like what happens when we do muted and why would this be different from muted? Well, it is, I mean, the guidance that's there now applies to muted, right? It says if the track is disabled and or muted, RTP sender must send sound. So that's what it says today. I think we're arguing about whether that, you know, I guess the first question is whether anybody actually implemented that and what results they got. And the discussion is whether we should do something right. else. Right. And the uh, other question is like, uh, I think there was a privacy reason for sending comfort noise. Otherwise, there was a paper a few years ago, or maybe five, six years ago, which said that 
they could detect what was being said just by looking at the speech pattern, um, the appearance and non-appearance of audio signal was sufficient to guess the language and maybe guess what was being said. If it's muted, um, yeah, you can see what's happening. Right. Well, I don't know the answer to the uh, question of the codex, but I, it sounds reasonable to me if you have a lot of participants and they're not going to speak all the time, that not having to negotiate <coughs> mute, which is, uh, well, I guess replace our null doesn't negotiate. So, so, no. so what, what about uh, packet class, for instance? I mean, you can have like a packet class be very equivalent to muting. And I guess that in case of packet like, like class, yeah. your codec will still work. Oh, well, well you'll, you'll have things, you bring in things like concealment and stuff like that, right? That's true. Yeah. We could the supposed to say that we can play it Well, if we can handle replace track null, then uh, right. and which does stop sending, then we, we should be able yeah, to. Yeah, it's basically, it. yeah, basically what Niels is saying is make it the equivalent of replace track null. Yeah. So let's just do that. Yeah. So, so, so you agree basically with Niels? Yes. Yeah. So I would, I, I would like to see a, see a test done. To, to check that if we stop sending, then we're okay. And if that works, then fine. Well, but I mean, you can, are you saying, I mean, because you can do a replace track null today. Yeah, I haven't seen any reports of so that. Did anything go wrong? No. Not that I've heard of. But if so, like, if that if that causes a bug, then we have a bug regardless because we can do replace track null. Right, right. So, and if, so if that happens, then we should fix that bug regardless. Right. So I think it makes sense Good to point. send the. Okay, so for this one, I think 1764 uh, UN say we accept the proposed solution from Gaines to basically make it the equivalent of uh, replace track now. And we know how to turn that into this type. We're going to be checking. Uh, I think so. Yeah. I think. <laughs> If we're not if we're not sending anything that don't send tickets. Yeah, I mean it's basically it, it, it's the it's last sentence if track is null, the RGB sender does not send the reply to the tag as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Next one, Henrik. So this resolution is uh, yes. that's good. Okay. Yeah. This is a, a blast from the past. We talked about this before, but but uh, previously uh, it was under specified what constraints should do and uh, during a, a in virtual interim or maybe even a TPAC, we decided that we, we need to specify which constraints are applicable in each spec. So in the case of uh, the Robert CPC, we have remote tracks. They're not sourced from get use media, so we need to specify which constraints apply. And the, uh, the, before we clarified um, that we need to be specific about this, Chrome already shipped with height, frame rate, and aspect ratio. Uh, as, as you can do, apply constraints to your remote track, and that causes downscaling. And the decision I saw from April 11th virtual interim was, oh yeah, just make a PR to specify the constraints. Uh, so why are we talking about it here? It's just, the PR never got merged. Maybe that's because it, it's, it wasn't updated, but I, I got the sense that there was some pushback about against adding more constraints. So proposal A, is to say that uh, specify in WebRTC PC that if you do use any of these constraints, then that causes downscaling or dropping frames. Um, and uh, the proposal B is to, to say, uh, no, we, we don't see any need for, for constraints in the remote track case, and uh, they shouldn't be specified. They shouldn't do anything meaning from this non-compliant for shipping this. And I would go with proposal A just because Chrome has already implemented it. So, so you implemented it by accident, right? It was not like an intent? Uh, no, it was intentional. Okay. With something we worked on, and it was what you, you could wire it up to use the same code that the Get Using Media code is using. Do you have measurements of on how much this is you? Uh, I on the note? No, I don't. I suspect it's not like. Yeah, I don't think it's a popular feature. It's, yeah, we have use counters for for constraints uh, in general, but we don't. I don't think we have broken mouth by remote local tracks. 
So there are, I have some questions. Uh, when you say aspect ratio can be used for cropping downstream, how exactly does that work? Um, you specify a different aspect ratio and it reduces um, the image to only show right. part of it? I think that would be the same as shrinking the height. It would crop, I think. Okay. And is that what Chrome does for camera? Um, I need to double check, but, okay. but I, so I've been told that we do the same thing for okay. remote tracks as get used to the tracks. So if I say something differently, then that's yeah, not intentional. So to be clear, only Chrome is implementing this right now, right? Yeah. Right. right. So the, the issue I have with proposal A is basically we're saying, okay, there's one implementation that is doing that. Two of us will not do it. Uh, there's an interop issue where developers will scream. Uh, blah blah blah. But that's that's not really great. So, um, so I think you're not only saying that there isn't any other implementation, but that there won't be any other implementation. So I, I I don't know what the future will will be. That proposal A is saying yeah, Safari is conformant, Firefox is conformant, Chrome is conformant, and they do not support like uh, it's, it does not mean very present job because well, uh, maybe. Mm -hmm. No, I think A means that Safari and Firefox are not compliant. Right. Well, we will we will be compliant because we would say uh, we do not support any constraint. So uh, no. web page, please figure out, and uh, and then it will, of course we will not do that. So of course the pages will break. Well, I think there are a couple of points there, which is uh, constraints uh, govern both what uh, get settings returns. So you can actually read these values from the remote track, even if you can't modify them. And then there's get capabilities and um, apply constraints. Right. Um, how apply constraints would work, whether you're allowed to constrain them. Yeah, that, that's a good point. So we also shift get settings. So you can check what's my frame rate or what's the, the, yeah, the height that is useful. without calling get, uh, get stats and then figuring Right. So yeah. without specifying anything, you wouldn't get settings either. Right. Right. So it seems like so one, would would one possible approach is to. Is to say that it's recommended or even to say to say to return only one value in in uh, in, uh, in what do the settings range. Yeah. Well, this is support supported values. So, so, so I want to I want to ask: like, Does it make sense to specify these? I mean, that doesn't mean it doesn't become a feature trait. Uh, if Chrome's the only one implementing it. Then well, but um, does it have to become a? I mean, lots of constraints are implemented by other browsers, and they're not features at risk. Right? So oh, they're really at some point. They should be. All <laughs> we analyze all the constraints and everything. Yeah, we have not analyzed all the constraints. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, the current land, the current current state is it's it's not clear. Whether or not it, which constraints apply or not. So going forward, we can either say no constraints apply, or we can say these constraints apply and nothing else. So, so I, I would look at. I would. I would. I would uh, prefer to say, well, these are the constraints that apply, and then then deal with the uh, lack of implementation elsewhere. Well, that's when, and we're going to, as I said, uh, final PR, and we'll have to demonstrate the board implementation. Yeah, but, but if you add law, you still have the same problem, right? It's not like yeah, it makes sure we need two implementation supporting. So we, we, yeah, we have two. We'll have one implementation supporting. <laughs> <laughs> no, and more specifically, if this is something we believe should be in, that yeah. maybe that's for so the, the, the question is, I like the get settings. So get settings is pretty much. Right. So it seems we want the get settings. It seems that it's unclear whether there's a uh, benefit in adding um, the cropping or the downscaling uh, at, at that level or at another level. Um, yeah. so maybe we should try to do get settings and uh, on the other. Yeah, can we yeah. do that from the spec of the we can uh, we can we can say that get settings uh, yeah. works um, and that uh, get capabilities returns exactly one value. Yeah, that, that was uh, specifically why we wanted each spec and uh, uh, charting the source to specify how to transport and what the capabilities are. So we can do those things. I don't remember that when they implemented it, they actually had some use case in mind where people wanted to. Well, I, guess, I would I say think, that I think it was uh, supposed to to wait. 
I think it was uh, applying rescaling after after reception. I, I can see some use case where uh, you go to optimize your encoding, for instance, a little bit to show. I mean, they would optimize the decoding since it's a, it's a remote track. But it, it's inefficient, though, right? Because if you're doing this, it means you're wasting bandwidth. Right, right. Yeah, you sure. should have done it on the center side. <laughs> so, yeah. it, so if you. So the far-fetched one would be that if you have an incoming stream that is actually SVC, and then you can uh, can say that uh, you, you set you set the, the it's so that the decoder knows that you can just just throw away these higher layers you're going to throw them away anyway. Yeah. But it's it's far-fetched. Exactly. But uh, this this is actually another another compatibility thing, which is. Uh, is a browser conformant when it implements more constraints than the, or more features than the, the base spec defines the behavior of? I would think that um, Chrome will is implementing WebRT 1.0 plus an additional spec. Yeah, I'm which they have to be extension. I don't know if I care about this. I write that extension spec. But I kind of agree with the, with the point that if you have actual stuff, uh, it makes compatibility not work because everybody will have to have, wait. If this is Chrome, then I can do this and then I'll do it. So you yes. have this. And it's a fairly obscure feature. <laughs> <laughs> okay. right. I think I'd like to get some expression of this. Yes. Yeah. 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 The other. Proposal, proposal yeah. C yeah. is defining the constraints to, uh, for, for getting, but no longer right. constraint if you yeah. try to modify them. Is it the resolution? I think so. Also, because in get user media, when you lower the constraints, actually that's the hardware changes modes and stuff like that. And so I would worry if we added this here that people will start asking, well, if I lower the resolution, shouldn't the peer connection then behave differently or the same bandwidth? And it becomes right, an right. implicit control surface. Sure connection. Right. Okay. So should we not proposal C? Yeah. Resolution. Uh, proposal C and proposal C to the different proposal settings. So, uh, if I understand this right, we have two conformant implementations for the proposal C. Yeah. Not no, yet. We have no conformant implementations well, proposal C. <laughs> so, are we going to get it? Yeah. I think I can go and get settings just for the purpose of. Uh, uh, because if I understand my get settings is already there, so that is. Um, we, we need to provide the right data. Chrome would need to unship um, half of this stuff. Yeah, so, so Chrome, Chrome would need to, to, need to, to modify get set. Yeah. To modify to say, make this and, and it's non modifiable. We have lots of cases where we have non modifiable values for other reasons. And so we have a framework. With height and framework and aspect ratio. Yeah. And we will need a test for this, but that we you don't have the same time as a Yes, we probably pass that test, but it wouldn't pass if you add a specific test to show, make sure that you don't. <laughs> you right. want to make sure you draw with the same error. Um, okay. Which is something we cannot do anyway at the moment, right? Because we don't have a way to test it using media and apply constraints for uh, for that part. There is no yet, not nothing specified, so that we can mock devices. Yeah, yeah but there yeah. is remote. Track. It's a remote track, so it's so remote remote remote. Remote. Yeah. 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 Okay, so. Define retrieval of constraint properties for get settings, but make them not modifiable. And uh, Danny is saying with a framework and access uh, okay. Okay. okay, uh this one relates to the RTC peer connection ACE error event, you went. Yeah. Um so I think you will not uh, find an, an issue about peer connection ice error event and thinking that maybe um so there's a field called host that uh, is exposing uh, basically uh, the private uh, IP address uh, in case of uh, error with, uh, let's say, stern servers. Right. And um, in theory, it could expose um, private information. In practice, I believe that 
it's exposing host data addresses that will probably already be given to the page. So in that case, we have no issue. And uh, the current rule, so, so the spec is saying when you need to do, to do filtering, then you go with uh, zero, zero, zero. So I think that the spec is basically uh, basically fine. We do not need to put MDNS names. Okay. It's much simpler to stick with zero, zero. So no change is actually needed. There's an odd edge case where you say, hey, I, I platform the relay candidates. So the, the, the host candidate will not be exposed. And the web page could have got it. So maybe we could filter the, uh, the host uh, address in that case. And also, I find it when looking at the um, spec that returning 000, 000 uh, and the port 0 in one field is, uh, is a bit strange. Why not use no? And also, why do we have like just one field while in other cases we have like uh, the uh, address and the, and the port and separated. Um, I don't know if it's too late. We just have one implementation. I don't know if it's because um, I mean, a potential issue or a potential to change that to be more uh, consistent. But uh, these are the additional uh, topic I would like to discuss for this specific issue. So you say there is one implementation of this? Yeah, uh, Chrome is implementing yeah, just a peer connection yeah. ISO even. Yes. But very recently, then it's not in my control. Uh, yeah, it's very recent, yeah. Yeah, it's just very recent. Yeah. Yeah, when, when the check in happened, we had a we had this question come up as to, hey, is there some privacy thing we should have done that we didn't do? So, so yeah, I, I guess for that point, the answer is no, but it's okay if the way it's, fine, it's yeah. not leaking anything. Yeah, especially since like MDNS names, it's only uh, when uh, you do not have to get user media permission. Right. So, and in that case, you will only uh, use uh, the default interface anyway. And um, so, well, that seems fine. So, I, I don't know if whether Chrome is uh, okay with changing or whether people think that the current API could be improved. Uh, I don't have a strong opinion there. If I had to implement it, I would implement it to be different. So my only comment is that uh, since it's a DOM string, if we could use empty string instead of DOM. Or empty string, yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 The advantage of zero, 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 zero is that uh, everything that, that uh, naively parses an IP for an IP address will actually succeed. Yeah, which is a bit strange because you, you want to detect that uh, it's uh, you actually uh, not necessarily. <laughs> All, if all you do is dumping it, dumping it in a diagnostic log, then uh, you might want to part. You might have called that uh, partially as an IP, IP address that, uh, right. that doesn't okay. care about the value. But in that case, should it be just um, IP address? Why the port zero, for instance? I mean, why are you stealing them together? Because, that's, because that's the syntax we have for right. cases where you actually give, give the value. Well, in, we have a lot of places where we have the both. No, I think there are two questions. There is uh, merging the host and the port, mm -hmm. and then there is what the null value looks like. Yeah. I think splitting the two, I think, is trivial one way or another. So maybe we should align with what has been done elsewhere rather than invent or mm -hmm. source. Uh, the question of what the right null value should be, I think, is maybe a little it's more interesting, although you could argue that then it's down to the logger to format it as a, an IP address in that as I want. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Why more, uh, what, uh, who do we break? Why do we break? Yeah. Although right now we're not breaking anything. Indeed. Yeah. So we're, we're talking about this the existing behavior. We're just talking about how sh how should we expose this, right? Yes. I don't know. I, I don't really know the existing behavior. Whether you're always using the IP IPv4 or if sometimes you're using IPv4 IPv6 uh, in front of us. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. You already explained it. So that's no, I'm saying we have we have the bad experience of uh, putting. Uh, Putting dummy values in the C line which right. led to this uh, Firefox interoperability problem. 
Uh, that's that's why I'm kind of hesitant to recommend anything that looks like looks different from syntax we have supported before. But if if nobody's uh, depending on this, um, we can do anything. Since it should do some things, so I guess yeah, it's not uh, compatibility is uh, is not a big big deal. I prefer empty string personally, but I'm fine. What I was about to say is that if you do send something different in IPv4 and IPv6, there is actually one bit of information that you lose by. Which is probably already uh, given elsewhere, but that's true. No, I wasn't saying that you bring more information, is that you lose if you oh. go to the string. Right. You, you, you wouldn't know in which. We, we, we filter it. So we filter it for privacy reasons. So more filtering is good. Yeah, I mean, I I'm just wasn't sure if that was value that was last time. Yeah. I guess I find it hard to understand what website would be broken by this. I guess they listen to this event and they expect. No, I think yeah. we can probably start from the assumption that this is not a backwards compatibility question, it's a purely right. aesthetic construction. Yeah. And it gets that kind of get any anything really than to do that. You cannot get this kind of error information from get stats. Yeah. Do we have this and all that and all that and all that anywhere else? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. That's... And then that piece of green sounds good to me. Mm -hmm. uh, and what about the link between host and port? So how does this candidate look in, uh, I guess, ICI's candidate? And we have DOM string candidate. Is that the same thing? Or no, it's like, a different thing. No, we have address. Yeah. DOM string address, unsigned short report. Yeah. So like, my, my only point was going to be we should be consistent with what we're right. already doing. If it's, right. if it's, if it's, if it's purely right. against, uh, how it looks. The only thing I like about the combination is that there's just one field that, that will remain the empty string. While in the other case, there will be the empty string and uh, it like it's optional, the board. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have a strong, strong opinion. Um, yeah. I guess nobody has. <laughs> yeah. and we, we should pick something. Yeah, we need to pick something so that it gets shipped consistently. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and the string seems perfectly fine. You like empty string? Yeah. Empty string and split spot? That's all. Uh, no, there is without port, would it be a number? Yeah. It should be. Sure. Then we have to update our implementation. Yeah. Are you okay with it? Um, okay. Yeah, no opinion, sure. It's, it's okay. So resolution and do the split and uh, empty string. Uh, are you already put one? Oh, okay. So in the case of so if port is a number, then what number will you get back in this case? Is it is it optional the number? It's no, it's not optional. Uh, so zero then I guess. Yeah. Well the number is not very secret. Well we can it could be optional, just add a question mark. <laughs> no, that's not yeah. Uh, yeah, but that's what I mean, you would send none back in that case. Okay. I can do it. <coughs> yeah, the port is optional, um, uh, it's not able on RTC ice candidate. Okay, so we should do the same thing. So we called it address on the Yeah. Yeah. Because of MDN things. Oh. So what will we do here then? Hoist. <laughs> and it will never report an MDNS then, right? No. Uh, what was it IP at the beginning? I uh, originally, yeah. Yeah. Well, we need to find the right name just so that we can ship these things. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is IP fine? Like, sure. Well, it's a coin. Well, 
<laughs> yeah, maybe the editors will figure it out. Yeah. yeah let's go. Okay, uh, issue 2257, now we are. What do you see? Uh, yeah, so this was. <coughs> uh, we got some feedback from uh, Anne. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Wait, can you go back and then yeah. forward again, because it added to the slide. It's not oh, missable. Okay. Okay. That's okay. Uh, it's too late. Huh? Okay, no matter what. Right. Uh, and so feedback from Anne that um, we have this um, get certificate API. We can return an RTC certificate. And um, we made it serializable. Uh, because we kind of wanted it to work like a dictionary, but it is actually an interface. It's a browser object. So it can be serialized, which means you can actually send it in post message to other processes. And uh, Anna was looking to, she's working on spectrum mitigation things and was concerned that this would open up to uh, spectrum attacks, which is stored in various places in memory. It can be sent to different processes. And stuff. So since the original intent here seemed to be to just allow for storage of the certificate, um, uh, he suggested we uh, basically the serialization process allows uh, a boolean that tells you whether this is for storage or not. So it's very simple to throw. So we added a PR that basically uh, throws a security error if uh, the serializing step um, if this is not for storage. So this would mean that uh, websites would no longer be able to send this RDC certificate and post message to other processes. It has to, the browser object will only exist on the page in the origin that it was created. My question, don't, don't we need the RTC certificate for uh, setting up some of the web transports, and don't we want those web transports to live off, off the main? Right. Yeah, that's fine. I would guess the post message is more, uh, yeah, in workers, you mean? I was thinking yeah. service workers, where mm. it's true that you can store it in ID and then uh, get it. Uh, on the other side with IDB. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and you post message your key in IDB, but it's much more convenient mm -hmm. to post message the actual data. Right. You have to yeah. take from a work, from a server page to a service worker. Um, that said, we are not exposing anything to workers and service workers. Right now. Well, yeah, um, but, um, for like a data channel and workers, you would actually want to reuse the same cert, right, for the DTLS transport. You yeah. would want to actually. Use post message with it. Yeah, I'm thinking you probably want to be able to, to move this around in the future. Right. Uh, so, I would look at um, not our RTC certificate, but uh, the web crypto stuff. And if the web crypto stuff is uh, post messaging things, I would be consistent with them. Yeah, but um, like, so here's a weird example. Um, for, uh, and Peter will be talking about this, for forking. Right. What you actually do is you use the, the DTLS transport with the same certificate to a different endpoint. Now it's it's on the same web page, mm -hmm. right? But you're you're basically you're sending your ICE credentials. You're getting an answer back, and you're uh, Peter will talk about this. You're you're, you're forking another ICE transport and then creating a DTLS transport on top of that, uh, and potentially doing this. Uh, so the worker thread. I mean, another way to look at the question though is do yeah. we have any choice? I mean, if this is opening a security attack, then. Well, um, Spectre uh, should be mitigated um, in various ways. I mean, if we are starting to. We, we should look at the features. But there are ways to mitigate PISM uh, without doing this. In that uh, particular case of transferring certificates. Well, the, the, the main issue there is uh, you have ma a mainframe and third-party iframe. And third-party iframe is uh, Google.com there, for instance, and they will post message uh, to this third-party iframe, right? Um, and then this third-party iframe lives in the process of uh, the main page. But if you're uh, splitting different processes um, all the page by, uh, by the domain, then uh, sector. Yeah, it's really And so, if it's not useful, uh, we should definitely uh, simplify this because it's good and it's true that it might uh, yeah. be better. And it's true that uh, certificates, you could 
potentially do post message on a different origin, which is completely useless. Uh, it's not working. So you get a certificate on a different domain and um, you expose it, and it, you cannot, don't have any use potentially. So that's some of the concern. But um, also uh, the the WPT test that is uh, is based on post message currently. That is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the question is if anyone would need to use those message uh, within the same domain. That's the use case for that. Yeah. So there are workarounds. You can uh, serialize it to IDB, and then uh, the other one will also get it from IDB. Right. right. But in terms of synchronization, it's uh, it's less straightforward to say, oh, I'm post messaging, and get the thing. It's uh, more straightforward. So I guess what I'm hearing is that we don't want to prevent that because we have in mind future use cases where this would be right. useful. We think we can mitigate it uh, diff in a different way. So maybe we should put a note that this needs spectrum mitigation to the... I would really look at the uh, web crypto criteria. Well, but web crypto was done before spectrum was the same. Right. So right. I don't think it's going to be helpful. Yeah, that's true. So is that something we want to ask? No, um, it's from the tag or security ID. Uh, so also, even if you can't serialize this, isn't isn't all the sensitive information and the certificate already exposed in, in like get stats and maybe even get fingerprints? Or am I mistaken? Mm -hmm. that? This, this, yeah. Yeah. Spectrum mitigations are not related to personal identity information. Yeah. I mean, the yeah, thing I, I assume you're concerned about here is like uh, fooling around with a private key yeah. or something. Uh, you, yeah. With Spectre, you can inspect the memory so you could retrieve the private key. Uh, the uh, so, what is the I'm not sure that's really, here? I'm not sure that's a valid concern for this one anyway. But because I, because there's no API to get the private key out of this. Right, thing. there isn't. It, it's true that you, you could even post message the key, the object to another ad domain and have an implementation that will uh, actually put the private key just when you actually need it. And in that case, it will never be used, so it will never be exposed. So it's an implementation detail. Yeah. Well. But again, I think we should call this out in our spec as a. Okay. As a risk. And if we don't do this, of course, if we prevent it, then I don't think there is any worry. But if mm -hmm. we do allow for it to be transmitted, keeping in mind that there uh, is a risk around the memory management. Okay. Yeah. I think anybody have you have you seen and would react to that approach? If you think anything along with this? Um, I don't know. I guess um, the main thing we should do here is to get feedback if there are anyone to see a problem with with this. And then uh, uh, it, it sounds like we would like to keep the ability to be post message so we can seek out other ways. Mm -hmm. Suggestions. Uh, okay. Yeah. So resolution. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so security and put a uh, note um, about the security issue. Yeah. And I guess you will follow up with Anna and Yeah. So, All right, so we are now uh, at the capture session. Do we want to document uh, the reason we, we did that? Yes, uh, which would future. be for uh, things like. Uh, so uh, data channel on workers. Would it be an option to to um, merge this PR now and then uh, bring it you know, revert it uh, if when we make it chance for workers? Well, but then you create a situation where yeah. you get an error in some browser that has a possession. Yeah. But you would get it in the one. 
ones that don't support the same channels for work. Yeah, we're talking about the future use cases, and, and the, those use right. cases haven't been implemented, and there's no problem with Yeah, but no I mean, basically, to, to allow this, and you have to monkey patch one way or another, right. the specs, that's not great. I mean, well, if we feel pretty confident these are use cases, we will do them. I don't feel that there is much value in doing this back and forth dance, because, in fact, the mitigation that need to be put should be put early on rather than when we have this. I would say that it's okay to be uh, strict now and and make it less strict when needed. And I don't see necessarily a backwards compatible problem because if this causes an error, you're already on an implementation where you we can't do anything with it. Can't do anything with it anytime. So we don't yeah, I mean the problem is that some of this is going to be used fairly immediately. Like as an example, there's a request to do things like web transporting workers. Web yeah, this, if, if this was an instant speech at risk, then right. there would be no problem. Yeah. And those are guys who take the field. Yeah, I mean, uh, basically, uh, you always want to, you, you probably want to construct the thing in the worker based on this post message stuff, like this cert you're going to use or whatever, so you, yeah. you'd be using post message product. So if you if you ever want to use to reuse certificates <coughs> and set up collections of workers, yes, you need them transferable. Yeah. The worker and the page has, have to have the same origin. Right. That's no that's a better restriction than not having them transferable. Right. And I can ask Anna about the index DB workaround. Yeah. If uh, he thinks that's an equivalent risk. Right? Be any no, it's uh, index DB has no no risk. I, I think the issue there is you post message to a different origin or to to star, and then your 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 the basic uh, user agent implementation will be to push the data and uh, and your your script. Right. Yeah, that you shouldn't be allowed. Yeah, currently, uh, I think it's allowed. Yeah. Yeah. There's no way you can say it's serializable, but only if you're in the same origin. Right. Okay. And, um, yeah, but that that putting on that restriction wouldn't break any of these scenarios. Mm -hmm. No, that would be the restriction. Be that be that something is there any other case where this type of behavior is needed for post message? I don't know. So Anyway, maybe that's one feedback you could bring back to Anna because that that having the ability to prevent post messaging to third party would be right. a better match to our need than preventing right. post message. Well, he might say then you know the index DB workaround is actually safer because it already has those protections. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it's less convenient synchronization kind of issue. Kind of right. Right. But it sounds like we can work for it. We talk, see his feedback, and either we do in the DB the workaround or we yes. make sure we can do this. Uh, so I guess our resolution is we would rather not, but if we, we have to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. We either we add a warning <laughs> note or we uh, add an exception. A note saying, OK, you can have the index DB in a set. OK. So now we have a session which uh, Yanni Bar will lead uh, relating to all of our capture specs. Uh, yes. All right. So first is screen capture. All right. Well, I just wanted to say a couple of words on um, media capture. In the last couple of years, we've added a couple of things. Uh, uh, we've added feature policy for camera microphone. We have added some fingerprinting mitigations. So we're using media on the right devices now to far until focus. We, we made uh, we put secure context on everything. Um, we fixed some parts of the media element integration of the load algorithm and element attributes. And we removed the over constraint event, uh, volume constraint, added a latent latency constraint, and clarified scope of constraints. And uh, specifically, that other specs need to specify which ones apply to their domain. So um, I think we're in good shape. That we don't have that many issues. So we can just jump in and we have screen capture for it. And that's uh, one issue, issue 60. Um, I think this is the only CR blocking issue of screen capture. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, when I looked carefully at it, I went, well, this is a CA blocker. Basically, the spec says, you know, if the UA can say that anything is anything as a surface, more or less, and it gives particular and definition of browser display service, which is the general form of a single document. I'm not sure what that actually means, but uh, <laughs> it, that's what it says. Uh, so this seems, so at any instant in time, a browser display surface seems to be a, the same thing as a tag. But uh, when you when you broadcast the tag, when you when you speak to a tab, you you should expect that if you navigate the tab to a new document, then you keep on you, you keep on changing that tab. Mm -hmm. So uh, so I. I, I tried to invent some text that said what I wanted in the language that was linked to the to, to, the, to the current document language, which is, and the suggested text is the one that uh, came up on the screen. They basically saying if you if you broke if you if you share a tab you share a tab. Is it really a document? Actually, it's more like um, no. I mean, a, a tab is what you share a document. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's this context, context or the concept of uh, I don't know if you start, but you have uh, history navigation. You have a, a browsing context, maybe. I don't yeah, know, but so browsing maybe, context. maybe through browsing context you actually want somehow You're sharing the browsing context. Yeah. yeah, because if you navigate, uh, yeah, you're so, still capturing. So, yeah. so this this thing, so yeah, that's much uh, simpler. The UI may, may choose to, to display to, to display a uh, display a browsing context. Mm -hmm. That's one. That's a very very much shorter paragraph. I like that. Okay. Okay. Resolution. We mentioned browsing con browsing context as uh, as uh, that capture. Um, so uh, we also, I think, wanted to get uh, working group uh, approval to bring, once this gets fixed, to bring uh, screen capture to CR. Are there any objections to that? So help, I think we need a formal CFC to... to right, we'll this. that whole process. Um, but wasn't the one where we discussed we need to do horizontal reviews? On uh, yes, mm -hmm. and also effort. That would be right. Yeah. Need a horizontal review. So once we have that, uh, we should run the CFC. Yeah, we need. I mean, in horizontal review, we need to do the fill out the privacy and security. So that we can get the tag yeah. yeah. And so, sorry, who's editing this at the moment? Uh, well, we just added yeah. Henrik <laughs> and Yanni Var as our editors. So we need to hold and you went, review right. and fill out what? The privacy and security self-review questionnaire. Yes, privacy and security uh, questionnaire. Uh, and so you, was it this one? I think it was this one. No, we do have an explainer for screen capture. Uh, no, we need one. We need an explainer. Uh, actually, hold on. Uh, I don't think we have an explainer currently, but we need one. Okay, let me explain. So we do that, and then we need the working to say, okay, we need to go to CR. No, I think. Oh, you mean we do that? Is it the yeah. horizontal reviews? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then we want to get the review back. Then we will say, okay, we want to go to CR. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Understand so, that you are requ you are now requesting a review, which may begin a multi-month discussion process right. potentially. That's what I meant by. <laughs> Right. Once you've received the feedback. It may require multiple months to even get an answer, but then after that, a multi-month process. Yes. Okay. But, but we're not going to get done until we get started. Yeah, that's exactly. exactly. <laughs> 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 okay, so let's, uh, let's get review start. Carl, I have one question about tab capture. Um, I guess we, we ran into this when we tried to do that. Uh, um, sometimes we had the use case where we wanted the active tab. So you only capture one tab, but it's whichever tab. If you switch to a different tab, you switch to capture that one. So is that an implementation detail? Is it a multi-window, the multi-window case? Well, uh, the, the, the benefit would be that you don't necessarily share all your other tab headings. 
like no. the whole window. <laughs> we actually, okay. uh, yeah, we, we actually uh, uh, added new, uh, new API, UI, UI surface in Chrome just the other week to handle that case because you don't, you don't, you don't want the. In many cases, you don't want that the type to switch. If you just briefly visit your email and while you're doing presentation, so so we so we actually added a, a banner that said, uh, "You are broadcasting another tab. If you want to tap broadcast this tab instead, click here." <laughs> it was kind of cute. And this this is an implementation like like the yeah. spec talk. So, but display surfaces you can do whatever you want, and then we need language like tab capture only when when the spec needs to clarify or recommend something about certain uh, like certain display surfaces that are more sensitive than others. Then we, can, yeah. as long as we know what we need, it's it's an editorial thing uh, in terms of what you have to implement. It's just display surface. And I think just we could add we could add a sentence saying that the UA is free to. to the, the UA can switch which particular browsing context it, uh, well, it uh, so, shows at any given time. So, Henrik, you, you, you added at some point the ability to switch from a window to another or to a screen or to tab uh, in Chrome, I believe, but you, you made some changes to the spec so that it was possible in Chrome. It was possible to change the source. Yeah. So, then it's, so it's already applicable. It's all, yeah, it's I don't think is, it, is there any specific thing? I don't think we need to change the spec to say anything right now. It's it's more like a clarification if we want to. Okay. Which is surely a clarification. So uh, one thing I don't this confusion stem from the existing definition of browser display surface, which says the browser display surface is the rendered form of a single duck. So maybe that's wrong. It's the one success. No, uh, you can change. <coughs> you can you can start by a uh, a browser in there, and then at some other point in time, just make another browser. Um, yeah. So the so, it's, so the, the word saying that the, the browser is the uh, UA can switch browser context. Yeah, but I still think it's not right to say it, it, it's a definition problem. Yeah, a browser once this browser display surface is a single document. I think it's wrong to say because. Um, that implies that if you have two documents, it's two display surfaces, and they're not the display surface is the browsing context. I think. Mm -hmm. I think that is the model, but now I'm wondering whether there's some reason why it's um, saying a single document. I don't think anyone's implemented that. that oh, you're saying maybe we should have a way for like, capturing just a frame, for instance. Um, I don't feel you see the. A uh, use case, but uh, I think the language is wrong. But I'm just um, trying to see if there's uh, there was ever an intent for this. Mm -hmm. So, it, so, it, 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 it. so it, it would be more like what's currently implemented in the browsing context instead of saying. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah. Should, we should do it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think, I think we and I think we should do that. It's more it's more conformant with it than this. Yes. Sorry. Uh, something occurred to me about the RTC certificate discussion. I don't want. I don't know if I should run it now or if it's getting. So my understanding is that we don't just want to protect against sub attacks in the field of RTC certificate. A website could use a spectre attack to get the private key that they are not supposed to get access to via JavaScript. Yeah. Yes, um, yeah. Yeah. So what we want to protect from is not just from third party spectra attacks, but also from self spectra attacks. Oh, uh, so that, 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 that's, that's a big refactoring, and that, that, that's also not something I don't quite see how that works, given that you don't have control over when you are accessing it. You, 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 can, you, you can do that by um, putting all the JavaScript stuff in the process and doing all the networking, all uh, no, the process. No, no I don't see how the spectra attack works, given that you don't have control over when the private key is accessed. I mean, because uh, certificate is, you don't, the object doesn't tell you at all when, can't you trigger the access of the? Yes, you, you, could, you could encrypt something with it. But. 
that's uh, a long way down in the chain. Yeah. And, and, uh, and, it, and you, you want constant time. You, you want constant time encryption anyway. Yeah. 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 You store it, you read it, you store it, you read it, you store it. You get all of the places. And then you really get a little spectrum to So the, you get the same issue with IDB, right? Is that your thing? Yeah, I, as okay. soon as you're um, so your lighting things. Um, okay, so then it's not a specific issue. Yeah. Okay, um, so I think we're now at the at media capture and streams. Uh, you in? Yeah. Okay, um, so I don't think it's needed, anything there is needed for uh, in the short term, uh, at least for shipping like recommendation. But currently, we, we don't have um, a good way. To add, remove, or set up the catch, capture devices uh, through web driver. Uh, why doing so? Um, nobody, no warranty providers is testing their own device change uh, um, callbacks. Uh, WPT has no support of device change events. Uh, when you do device change events and you call any more devices, you end up into uh, discovering subtle issues in the spec. And uh, if we had that, then we had written the test a long time ago and it's done. Um, in WebKit, we have uh, automatic testing uh, layout tests where an internal API is so that we can add a ring mock devices with a very simple set of uh, capabilities. So it's, it's very simple. Uh, and if other browsers uh, had the same kind of support, we could. Uh, Agree on the web driver API and then um, write the WP test and allow websites to actually do that. So I think, in theory, probably everything, everybody is interested and it's a priority. Um, and the, the, the tricky part there is probably, we, we might all agree that, yeah, it would be nice. The tricky part is uh, the actual uh, number of settings. Um, I specifically um, scope it to only. Um, Trigger bad chain events or things like that, which makes it like uh, a very, you don't need a huge set of capacities like uh, controlling whether you want to in inject like specific audio uh, data or specific video data. Since we have uh, canvas capture uh, web audio, we can anyway basically emulate that anyway. So, but there's still this hole there where it would be nice if we could uh, help developers and help ourselves. Um, so, I can propose something, but I don't want to propose something if, if, like, if, it, if there's no intent for people to use it for some degree. Session. So, I don't know. What's, I, what are people I, thinking? I think for all of these things, uh, we, we should have had you know, web driver APIs for, for media stream tracks, for example. And, and so adding and removing devices is, is, is the same thing. It's, it's how we should so that we can do WPP testing. Uh, so should we do? Yes. Um, it, but yeah, it's, it's one of those priorities things. This is once, once we've already implemented these things, how much incentive is there to add test coverage after the fact? Um, that's another question. I, I, I guess people, for people have promised me to, that they would write up a spec for this real time, real soon now, for about two years, two years yeah. hmm? with various various uh, values for, for people. So I've heard you and make the offer to write it. So I guess the question really is if there is a spec with other implementers. We have an implementation, so. Defining an API that is basically describing what we are doing is I can do that and I I can promise I will do it. Uh, but I don't want to do it if I know like basically it will also stay for it. Or, uh, I, I can understand it's very low priority. So the, 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 la the lack of some aspect has uh, blocked implementation strangely. I mean, okay. Because the people who have to implement it don't understand. Understand the context of web driver and right. so on enough to enough to actually write the spec in a way that makes sense in the web driver context. So if you can write a spec, I think we I think there's a good chance that someone will pick up pick it up and implement it. Okay, I would certainly push 
but for that. Yeah, I think we recognize you need this. For that. Yeah, yeah I'm happy to review here. Yeah. Yeah. I I'm not sure it's in the just I don't know. Yeah, but which check with uh might be a test spec. Hmm? Might be in a web driver spec. I, I, think, I think the model that the web driver people ask is that actually any extension specific to the field, like in this case that user media should be owned by the working group in question and be a spec. Yeah. Sure, but it's, it's not in the game. It could be an extension. I, I agree. I mean I'm just saying the right model is probably an extension to get to the and I, I think we're motivated uh, because we actually regressed the device change event in Firefox 16. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, okay, lack of spec actually. Does it have to be a separate document? At this yeah. point, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's okay. <laughs> not. And we can manage it back after if we do a one dot one. Otherwise, Dom will kill us all. <laughs> and quite. <laughs> The future specs shouldn't we just have the like have a section like this is yes. web driver that, that's what's ideally we would have yeah, it would make the most sense that you're adding the test as you're adding the features uh, including the web drivers and, and to your point if there are like for screen capture or other extensions that we want then maybe we should start thinking about them sooner rather than okay uh Next issue, uh, high speed 65. Um, should a device change even be fired when the list of devices remains the same? So there's an example there. So a user is reading a newspaper article, and the newspaper article is registering a device change event uh, for um, obscure reasons. Um, so when the user is switching to a new tab uh, and he's doing a web call, so he plugs a camera. So there's a device change then somehow. And you unplug it at the end of the call, and it goes back to the newspaper article. According to the spec, uh, there will be a device change yet fired on the newspaper article. And there will be exactly the same uh, exact devices before and after. So it's useless, potentially harmful. So uh, I believe all implementations are doing it, but I would like respect to change slightly so that we would allow uh, future improvements and not be blocked uh, because of that. So we don't filter on page visibility or anything? On, yeah, on page visibility, yeah. yeah. But we, we delay the device change. We event. delay, we don't actually filter yeah. things. And I think it's just an overlook of uh, the upper bandwidth. It's not like high design. No, clearly okay, not. Yeah. 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 I just say it's meaningless. Right. Yeah. Uh, that's that's good to me. The only thing, so if the user did not unplug the camera before they went back to the New York Times, they would still get a New York Times right. still get a device change event. That's uh, that's something we, we should discuss because we should filter things. And in our case, um, so we have another debate. Um, but just uh, but it's it's useless. The scope of yeah, because in most cases, uh, what I want is any device devices to return nothing in that case anyway. So. Firing a device change event, then, yeah. And not, and in what case do you want it media device to return nothing? Um, in event devices, when when there's no permission, no device info permission, I, I don't want it to provide any useful information. So that's a, that's tomorrow's discussion. Uh, so that, yeah, but uh, but in, if in, in, if the implementation is doing that, then you could you could say that uh, in event devices is not. Giving any new details, so there's not even the concept of the device change even there. I mean, uh, they, so it's a if, if, implementation. If, if you don't have permission for for an emulate device, you shouldn't have, get, have permission to leave to get that thing online. That makes sense. But tomorrow's is good. Yeah. Uh, so next slide. Yes. Yeah, sorry. We. Uh, so proposal. Well, our browser to not fire device change even because some devices actually the same basically. Yeah, I think it makes sense to tie it to the output of enumerate devices. Yeah. Because uh, depending on how tomorrow goes, that would apply that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you're saying allow browsers to not fire. You're not saying browsers must not fire. I don't want to do too much. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> you must not, right? 
No, no, no. Okay, okay. Yeah, we will we'll see the PR exactly. But yeah, probably it's, it will be normative. And um, I don't want it to go. Well, maybe I want it. Uh, so, I mean, so, one aspect is that this is less, but that will be harmless. Yeah. It's a harmful aspect. Too. Hopefully, with Friday's changes, it will not be harmful. Okay, so, the must not is not necessary per se. Uh, yeah. I mean, if, if it was like creating new privacy attacks or things, then clearly we should forget it. It's useless. So, currently, it is, so we should manage it. From, yeah. Okay. So if I had to write a PR, yeah, we probably we would probably not have many. So let's let's record it. Yeah. Um, Next slide. So um, yeah, we haven't really been clear about how how you resize. Um, so this is similar to the other talking about the, uh, this next says that the resolution is downscaled and or cropped from a higher camera resolution by the user agent um, if you use this resize mode proper the scale and then I think there was this question about mm -hmm. are you allowed to have black borders or not um, like do you zoom in or do you so I, I, I made a PR to just add this sentence that I took from some other part of some other spec say that the media must not be upscaled stretched or have fake data created that did not occur in the image yeah. source. You could go even more specific and say <clears throat> when you zoom in, you have to zoom in on the center or something like that. But this is more like I think the issue was Safari and Chrome and Firefox, I think, do possibly different things here. And, and the, the important part to call out is that you must not create fake data because we don't want to have black borders. Um, no, I'm, 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 I'm fine with the, um, the spirit. Uh, I know that we won't be able to engineer it. We won't be? It will be very difficult. What? Um, so let's say that you have a web page. I, it's, a, it's an OS restriction currently. So you, you have a web page that is uh, capturing at uh, HD resolution or small e resolution. Um, at, uh, uh, HD resolution. Then there's another application that is uh, touching the camera. Then the camera will be uh, reset and will capture at uh, a lower resolution. So either we will um, expose that if we have to like this argument to web page, so the resolution will change dynamically, and in which case the web page is aware of something that it should not be aware, or we will upscale it. They will be able to identify that it's being upscaled with uh, fine grain uh, things. But it's, it's not. It's not great. It's not. It's not great. So we have some edge cases. So I'm, I'm fine with should, but we, I know there are, there are cases where it will be hard to meet that requirement for us. Okay. So your so your problem is with the upscale. It's not the, the black borders are not the problem. Right. 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 In the black borders. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Firefox and Chrome have this have the same issue. Mm, they yeah. Do. Yeah. If. If you're capturing from the camera and another application configures the camera, mm -hmm. your feed gets reconfigured as well. Yes, yeah. but we never upscale. There's actually language under on resize mode that says so you, you expose them that another app did something to the camera. I think these are two different issues. One is what does it mean to rescale uh, from the high resolution camera? And the other issue is whether or not like uh, the the source changing the, is observable. Right. If if the if the camera resolution change, what do you do? Is a separate question. Then how do you resize the resolution yeah. given a high high resolution camera? And do you think they have a word? Oh, there's already a language I wanted to point out. And this, uh, this seems to come up when you try to abstract away that there are two pages using camera one. And it already says that you may disguise concurrent use of the camera by cropping and or downscaling to mimic native resolutions uh, when there's no resize mode. Yeah, well, well it's very first, right? So we, will, we also want to have the freedom to upscale. Right. So what Firefox does is when there are two, uh, we basically pick the high resolution of the two requests and then we downscale the other one. So what happens if another application configures? The camera, right, that's so that your feed that was at 
and one mm -hmm. suddenly is is half half size. We're not talking just no. Firefox. We're okay. talking about okay. Safari and Firefox. Yeah. Firefox. Yeah. I said you cannot. Okay, so, yeah. you're, so, so, you're, so you're actually allowing someone else to configure the camera as well. Yeah, and that was multiple captures in Chrome. They didn't allow that, but uh, you can see well, if you have if, if you have some, some. I'm pretty sure Chrome and Safari can work together yes. on the same camera. No, with, no, with, with multiple cameras, access within Chrome. We yeah. didn't allow that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah but, but, but I, I see that you can have the problem when you when you are but when you when you can't guard the camera against. But that's amazing. Yeah. Should we have? Yeah, on the US though. Yeah. <laughs> To end the tracking, it's a two. I'm trying to understand what is happening. I mean, it's, it's really on each case. Right, but that's separate. That's, that's separate. So, so, in the case of a different tab, but also using it using media at the same time, then we, we don't change the camera. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. but yeah. I think, I think, I think uh, this needs to be clarified. I do think it's a separate issue. Like poss possibly you could add another sentence to say like it's possible for the the camera resolution to change due to other events. But in terms of just what does the research mode mean? I, 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 are we in agreement with this? This is fine. Fine, but file an issue to say to explain that it's possible for I don't know. Up, up scaling for the fact of, of so hiding the fact that the camera so, so you should change you, rather than because of resize mode. So, so should you add a sen sentence or yeah. often that's not except except when uh, when uh, external conditions uh, force you to upscale or something? Right. Yeah, something like that. Right. Like because that, there's a difference between up upscaling to fake. Camera having a different resolution than upscaling because you have constraints saying I want 720p even though my camera is up to the uh, well, well I, I it's, it's not working anyway. Either. Well, like yeah, yeah. The, the, the black the black uh, the black pixels is working. Okay, should just I just remove upscaling for now? It should be fine on the issue. So. so yeah, but uh, your point was that there was a uh, interoperability issue between Safari. My main concern was black the black border, right. but yeah, and it seems like if we are actually up allowing the browser to upscale from the original source, unless there's like a privacy concern, and that's just that's just the way things are viewed. Sure, uh, um, but it's it's a it's a small issue. I mean, maybe there will be. Yeah, I don't, I don't see any use case. But, uh, yeah. yeah. So remove upscale from this sentence and then merge the PR. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's stretched. It's not enough to cover again. Right, stretch. Yeah, don't stretch. Right. I like stretching. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, is the number devices order uh, significant? So we we had a feedback by some websites that they would like to hit the default devices. Mm -hmm. uh, so in, in macOS, we, we had a, an order, and it was not always the default device which uh, was first in the list. Mm -hmm. uh, it was not guaranteed, and it was not always the case. Um, and they want that specifically for microphone, like. Uh, uh, they're less interested in, for camera and um, the current behavior uh, from the, from the browsers uh, only on macOS is that basically you can change the system default audio input device and when you call any of devices uh, and you have a list of devices the first one will be a default microphone um, and also when you do get to the audio through usually the expectation is that you will pick the first device in the list. But there's no guarantee there. Um, also, I, I noted that Chrome is firing a device change even when the system default audio input device is, is changed, uh, which makes sense when uh, device info permission is granted because the, the label will, will change 
but it does not make sense when the label is not exposed. But that's fine. Uh, so, sorry, when the default device, the device ID stays the same? Or? Uh, yeah. yeah the device ID, but the label changes. Yeah. yeah, and that's, uh, that's nice. I, li I, like, I like it when you have device info permission. Oh, the default device has changed, so maybe I should do something. Um, so it seems that there's some uh, consistency that we could try to express. Uh, the thing is, I don't really know whether we have the concept of uh, system default audio uh, input device in all platforms that we care about. Um, but we, if we have that, maybe we can leverage things so that we could describe the behavior that we've already implemented. I remember that when we, when we were discussing default devices a couple of years ago, it turned out that uh, Windows had two of them. Two default input devices? No, uh, output device. Output device. Oh, I'm, only, I'm not only talking about uh, audio input. Yeah. That's, the, that's the only concern people have. For camera, I'm, I'm okay also. Maybe that's a default camera. But yeah, isn't there? I don't know. We, in Mac OS, there's, I don't think there's a way to um, change dynamically. Uh, but I mean, maybe in the future it could. I mean, even if you don't have it on all OS, you could say if there is a default device, or behave that way, whatever that, that way is. Sure. If there is an equal one, yeah. user agents uh, are encouraged to default uh, blah, blah, systems default camera and or microphone when possible. Right. I think yeah, that, that describes all you will get if you do video true or your true. Yeah. So I think, uh, but it's, 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 not, it's not guaranteed. And uh, any right. devices also will be able to define. So. Well, uh, and even the solution of Keep the same ID and change the label for the system. Oh, right. but that, that is a Chrome specific implementation. Right, but is that something we actually want to. So if, if we say if there's a change of uh, the default audio input device, should you expect a device change at all, for instance? Well, should you expect a device ID to say? I mean, the fact that the device ID stays the same when in fact it's no longer the same device is, I think, clever, but well, not something I would have necessarily well, expected. Well, uh, it, it depends. So in Chrome, you have a default device, and then you have... Uh, so it's two, a virtual device. It's also. a virtual device, yeah. yeah. And uh, the device change event in uh, Mac OS would fire when you would just have a switch of the order but it's just what you need. So is it a bit of virtual? Microphone device at all? I think system. so, in Chrome, yeah. Uh, technically, it doesn't really change. Yeah. Or the, the result of it changes, but it's sort of a smart microphone. I'm not sure that if you're changing dynamically, the track will actually dynamically change. I, I haven't checked that. Well, I mean, it does seem to me that giving some more guidance, at least if not uh, requirements, when a new app defaults to be used, so that could create some significant interrupt issues. Yeah, it seems, it seems to me that they're proposing a bigger change or a bigger something, which is that uh, enumerate device when you when you call get your media video video true audio true, you should get the first one in the list um, from enumerate devices, which is a requirement on the order of things in enumerate devices. I'm just saying the demonstration I'm doing that currently, and maybe. And then, uh, I mean, it's. Uh, I, th I think it's a very nice, very nice, uh, nice feature to have. I mean, uh, if you we we at the, at the moment the spec says you can return whatever, mm -hmm. but uh, if if you change the spec to to say that that the if all other things are equal, you should and you're allowed to return the first one, you should return the first one. It's actually, I think, in Chrome specifically, the algorithm is written so that uh, it try to get the things that is closest to the default device, basically. So the distance function is set so that you get as close as possible to default, which means that if not, if no constraint is provided, you automatically get the default device. Mm -hmm. Which fits with user agents are encouraged to pick the default. Yeah, no, we will not encourage it anymore. It be yeah. Yeah. No. I oh. think we can say that if, if the user agent, which means the operating system, uh, if it has a notion of a default device, then it should be first. And if the if the default changes such that the order changes, then fire in the event. 
right? But if if there's if there's no change in order, you don't need to try the event, I guess. But that would only happen if you only have one device, in which case how can you change the default? So I, so I seem to hear that the support for saying yes in the original question. Yes. We can we can make the enumerate device list order significant. Yes, I have one caveat just for this inspiring future ideas about implying meaning to order is that if you then start to apply constraints, uh, would uh, websites start to expect that, oh, then I should get the second one. But if, if the first one doesn't match the constraint, I should get the second one. But that's, right, currently there's no limitation. There's no um, limitation on order that we use when applying constraints out there. Yeah, if I understand correctly, what you're saying is, say that someone is put a specific constraint, then the order, uh, order of whatever comes out of there should, be, should match what's closest to that constraint. That's a good question. I don't know that you were saying that. <laughs> but that's what I understood. So, so, uh, so we have a list of devices. Right. And, uh, you, you keep the number of devices list. You put a score. Mm -hmm. And if you have like oh, yeah. two input time. If the, the bigger score, like matching the two, two devices, then you pick the first in the list. Yeah, right. But it's starting to be creative, and that always confuses. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. 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 So resolution, yeah. uh, try to specify uh, another for me. Yes. So the order, so we're just talking about the default device, the single device. Right. Okay. Not so the, the so, order of everything. So, so we, we got support for saying that the first, first device is the first device. We were to have gotten through uh, the media stream recording, but I think uh, we, I guess we have a choice of breaking now and coming back to media stream recording. Um, and then just sit on forever. Or <laughs> it on. Yeah, one of the two. <laughs> but we have uh, just one hour schedule for it, which for a front person is extremely short. <laughs> <laughs> so what do people want to do? Hit the industry recording and maybe take sure. a little bit off lunch. Yeah. Okay. All right, Henrik. Right. Um, so, uh, with me, the recording. Um, so, if you are recording a remote track, a WebRTC track, then what ends up happening is you decode the, the track because you're, that's what WebRTC does, and then you plug it into the recorder and it encodes it again. So two questions: Can we avoid the costly recoding? Um, and question two: um, Can we somehow can we get a get dump of the the raw encoded stream? Which I guess is the same question. Kind of, but. So um, I propose there's there's two versions of the proposals. Um, one is strong saying we must not uh, recode, and the other one saying the implementations are not to. Um, so. Right, you, you specify with the mind type the output you want, and the proposal is that if you don't if you don't specify which codec you want, um, then it should and you and you're trying to record a remote reverse effect, then it should just use whatever the input was. So even if it's, if it's the same encoder, usually you have a real-time encoder and a non-real-time encoder that will uh, use different uh, frames. For better compression, like the frames and, and so on, and uh, it might be beneficial uh, for media recorder to compress more. So it's it's, it's actually good even if you are using H D four or V eight or V nine. The same um, to change for the encoder parameters because you know you know you're not in real time. Yeah. Uh, yes. So I don't I don't want to remove the ability to re-encode. Like like if you specifically say I want uh, to encode. Uh, then you should get a movie economy because it would be a difference. For example, like the frequency of the keyframes and things like that. Like if, if you end up with a recorded file and you want to play it, it would be a difference. Can you jump around in this file or do you have to play it from the start? There is a difference, uh, but the, it's useful to well, the performance is a nice thing to have, uh, but it's also useful uh, to, to debug things if, you, if it's possible uh, with a standard API to get the raw. Code itself. So, so my proposal is to say that, that if you specify the codec output, 
then you get a re-encode, even if the input was the same. But if you, if you don't specify, uh, which means that the user agent is allowed to pick the encoder, then the, then the user agent must pick you know, this NOAA encoder. Just, wow, that's a, that's a, in terms of implementation, it's, uh, it's a big requirement. Yeah, so that's why the proposal B is that the, the implementation should be allowed to do this. Mm -hmm. um, but, but, uh, if I understood right, you were suggesting that there are cases where you want a real coding and some cases where you don't. Yes. And in, so in your proposal, proposal A, you use a video codec as a hint to that uh, behavior, and proposal B, basically that behavior is no longer available at all. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I don't like the um, changing. I think that currently, if you don't specify it, the, the expectation is uh, the browser picks the best format. Yeah, right. So, so now you're changing I'm that to that the best format is to. It's not the worst format, format, which is the wrong. Well, okay, well. Yeah. well yeah. Okay, so my, my point was don't we have something where you don't. We could, we could. I mean, API-wise, we could have a separate field to say, like, right. prefer, prefer uh, avoiding the encoder. So, in, in terms of implementation, when I look at what we're doing currently, it's like we, we have the encoder, we get frames, we pipe it uh, to 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 the um, to the encoder. So it's very generic. It's very easy to implement. This specific um, profile. We'll be like, oh no, we will not use uh, the decoder anymore. We will get the data before. Yes. Right. Uh, so it's it's uh, it's not like a, a small change. I think that's an yes. optimization. Can okay, you do it today? Right. I, mean, I guess to me it is an optimization. Uh, it, it's what a, what it's is a, missing it's... is a signal that the developer wants or not that optimization. Yes. Yeah, so I but think to the point of making it a must, not that feels pretty heavy handed. Yeah, so, so to, today I think I think the spec would allow us to implement uh, not the encoding. Mm -hmm. That would be allowed. But yeah. in terms of it's just an optimization, when you get into details like how often I keep it produced or like, like the the output will be uh, so so observably different that that I think the spec should say something about this. Well, I think the spec should let the developer express what they need, for sure, which your proposal does partly, but I'm yeah. not sure that we actually need to enforce the must not re encode thing. Okay. Yeah. The, the, the other thing, may, maybe it's a new feature. It, it, uh, it, it actually sounds like a use case for insertable streams. A web connect, yeah. yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Because I, I can see the, the use case that you want to do things and that the thing, hey, I want to dance. But this way, web codecs would allow you to do it or not do it, depending on your own, whatever you want. Yeah, if your codec is there. <laughs> yeah, if it's there, right. But if you, if, uh, if you want something in the short term to be able to get access to the raw encoding stream, yeah. uh, and then there is it. There is implementer interest to to get this. Was, this would be an API to allow us to do that. And, and I'm wondering. Yeah, my, my problem is that some of the newer codecs, right? The the actual work involved in like re-encoding it could be significant. Yeah. Like for AV one or something, that could be. A, yeah, then that, that's, that's another big point. You can say, oh, it's just an optimization, but, 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 but it's it does matter because but, encoding is. is right. But in that case. Why giving this um, yeah. Boolean flag to the um, Yeah, I don't know about the flag or not. Maybe it's the user agent that should decide, oh, right. save right. one, I will do this. this way. Yeah, that's a good point. But just to get a sense of, if there's, if, is there anyone who is objecting to uh, an user agent being allowed to perform this optimization? Oh, we, we should allow it. If it's we should allow it. If it's if it's not the case, then yeah. Right. So the very least, we don't have any CPU processor vendors here. In front of the, <laughs> <laughs> the very least. <laughs> <laughs> so you must be. <laughs> okay, so, so it's a good idea, and then but then the next step should be managed. Should we manage it, or how do we give the hint? Uh, might require a lot. Or maybe it's just. So I think I, I'm hearing. Strong support for proposal B and uh, uh, more, far more doubts about the proposal A. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I so I'd say merge proposal B. 
Okay. Let's do proposal B. I can write that here. Um, okay. Uh, <clears throat> this should be a fun discussion. Oh, yeah. So, mm. replace stream. Stream. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, media recorder says that if you're, if you're recording and you, you modify the set of, of live tracks of the screen you're recording, then you should stop recording. Um, so I made a proposal to say uh, that is a promise. Uh, it has a promise you mm -hmm. replace stream and it replaces the stream. Um, it requires the same number of audio tracks and video tracks before and after. This mainly due to I think the spec is very uh, unclear about what you do if you have multiple tracks. I don't really know, uh, but but it's it's framed in terms of streams. So I went with stream. Uh, the reason I have promise here uh, because the recording is, is asynchronous, but but I mean you could just say hey this is the new stream end of story. But I, I think because because we have language saying that if you if you end the, the stream being recorded, then you must you know fire an event or stop recording or something like that. So the idea with the promise is that you can you know that when the old stream is no longer used, which means that you can listen to this promise and then you can end the old stream. So uh, anyway, the, the point the point with being able to replace the, the, the stream for recording is the same as the replace track in RTC, and that you change which media is, is being processed and in a seamless fashion. You don't have to end the recording and then start recording again. You just change which frames you get. Which is a big thing around here. Yeah. yeah. So this was my proposal, and then Geneva has a, a follow-up proposal. <laughs> I can, can take it from here. I have two like proposals. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, so some concerns with, um, so I like the general idea, um, but with the replace stream, um, we get into issues. Um, meter recorder defined as back when streams were how we handled things before uh, we switched over to tracks. Uh, and there's some similar concerns here where, even though I believe all implementations of meter recorder right now have, can record max one video track and one audio track, the spec actually doesn't have any such limitation. So I think we have to uh, at least follow and think about what happens if there are two video tracks, or maybe more likely uh, one video track and multiple language tracks, maybe English and French. Um, and if you do replace stream, it's not clear if there's two audio tracks, for example, which ones should be replaced with which other ones. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think we should pivot to replace track. Um, and I think that's doable, basically by having a replace track method where you say replace this track with this other track. So mm -hmm. you have to pass in the old track, and then your uh, your the JavaScript is then be very explicit about what should be replaced with what, <coughs> and so then you have no ordering issues, and it's not uh, we don't need extra pros to say that the tracks number of tracks have to be the same, and that's implicit because you can't get it wrong. Um, also, we discussed with Firefox that we don't think you need a promise because we think all the checking can be done synchronously. Uh, so that mm. even though the, the switch is asynchronous, they cannot fail at that point. So, um, but you don't get to know when the change actually happens to that, right? You need a new event. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I think if I, if I, I think it might be fine yeah, because in, in what, how you replay, uh, implement end the track causing recording to, to stop recording would be, you know, the queue. Oh. I think it's probably fine. To do I, I, I claim we don't actually care when it happens. What okay. we care is that when that is done, if if you that you can stop the old track and you're guaranteed that the recording will not contain any frames that are black. So, right. so, and that can be guaranteed without the JavaScript knowing when that actually happens. What do you mean you do replace track and then? You should old be able to track, track yeah. stop. You should you be able get to the track, old track, new track, and then old track stop. And the recorder should have all the information. But then knows. you could have a gap. Like if let's say, it shouldn't be any if end, end, if that depends on how end is implemented. If end is like okay, after I call end, there will be no more frames coming from this track. Then that might mean that there's some duration of time while while this new parallel task is executing to start recording on the new track. We're right. not getting any frames. But the other is claiming that the user agent guarantees that it doesn't end the track. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's true. That's so, true. Right. 
So I I like the idea of the feature. Um, I prefer tracks. But there's one issue if you actually want to change two tracks at exactly the, the right at the same point. Yes, I think and that's and that's the, that's the good thing about media stream. There is that. So I I have some um, I, I don't know yet. Uh, um, related then, to sorry. If you do several request track in yeah. rows, uh, it uh, gets aligned by the user. Everything is happening in, uh, in, in background threads anyway. So right, but basically, if you gave three commands in the same cycle, then the UA yeah. could say I'll be yeah. aligning them. So, yeah. well, you need to have a lock somewhere. And usually, what I would do is I would add a lock when starting replace track and then releasing it. And then re, uh, retaking it uh, at the next replace track uh, call, and then you release and you release and they, but, they but may. But can't you do the lock at the at the what task level? The JavaScript task level. Proposal C. We have <laughs> instead of always taking uh, two arguments, we have a media stream track dot 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 argument, which which is. I think JavaScript is single threaded, like so you don't actually have concurrency with the background thread in, in the sense that you can well you have concurrency but you can manage it. So you it's, I don't think it's I don't think we need locking in JavaScript. I think you can do multiple synchronous methods in a row and have some sense that these happen at the same time. I think Johnny is correct. I think we can guarantee that that call okay, is yeah, we can IQ task, yeah. So uh, I, I don't. So I don't. Like, yeah. I don't like. Um, I don't like when we do one operation as multiple function calls, and then like implicitly the yeah. starting that operation is is and like because you don't like <laughs> JavaScript. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so I, I prefer I prefer uh, one operation to be one function, which is why I propose multiple uh, arg uh, argument that we can have a variable number of, of tracks as input here. Um, um, but you just do a list of track pairs. Yeah, a list of track pairs would be would be even nicer. Uh, but in either case, I think I think I'm in I'm in favor of proposal B. I, I just so discuss this on the PR level. Like, yeah, I'm not ready yet to. Like all your promise, you're saying all your checks will be synchronous. Uh, I'm not yet sure for us, uh, and uh, so I, I would like to think more about it. Um, like maybe there will be cases where uh, another track is uh, have different channels counts, and maybe we 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 can do the checks asynchronously because we, we are smart, or maybe we we need to go back. To go see the encoder with whether you will be able to handle it properly. Um, so maybe maybe a promise would be would be good to have. Promise is probably safer, right? Yeah. yeah but we, we need to investigate I, whether it's required or not. Well, I think that is why we have a promise on on send and replace track as well. We don't actually have any had any need for it yet. But in that case, um, that should also solve the concurrency issue then, because then. Mm -hmm. You could do replace you know, multiple replace tracks in a row and you promise all. Yeah, yeah. And you kind of, the use agent can now definitely ensure that they happen at the exact same time. They can, but implementation wise, it's a lot more tricky because then you have to keep track of multiple operations and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. I would prefer to. Uh, but you, you gather all the, for each call, <laughs> you gather all the promises. Can, you have can, list can we just say we want to go in the direction of proposal? Yeah. Um, Who's going to create a PR for it and then we'll review it? Yanni Bar. You're figuring it out. Full confidence. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So, resolution, um, stop with Pogo Yeah. Yanni Bar to create a PR. Uh, the the selection, I guess. Pair done. Except that. Uh, any promise. Promise, promise. Discuss multi or track changes. Yeah. When do we recommend? At 1 p.m.
When do we really record it? <laughs> <laughs> when we come back. It's uh, one, uh, one, uh, one twenty. One ten. I promise it will be an enthralling stats discussion. You won't want to miss it. Ooh. So you so will be dancing in the one fifteen. <laughs> one fifteen. One fifteen. One fifteen. Okay. Is my last okay. word. When do we start? One fifteen. One fifteen. Fifty five minutes to for. Okay, fifty five minutes. All right. Whatever, whatever food you want to start. <laughs>